Well, hello and welcome to Perfection Learning's adoption presentation video. Uh, my name is Zach Smith. I am the North Texas uh, contact for Perfection Learning. Um, and if I were you, I would have four questions. What, what do you have to offer? Um, How is it different? What are the differentiators between our product and, and uh, some of the other uh, options that you'll have this adoption season? Also, um, how is this going to help my students become college and career ready? How, how's it going to build them as readers and writers and, and just um, improve their overall literacy? Um, and lastly, how is it going to help you as the teacher? Um, teaching is a hard job. I'm a former educator myself. I know the challenges that, that you have. Um, and, and with these new teaks coming in, it's going to be an adjustment. Uh, it's going to be difficult. So, you know, how can we help you lighten the load off, off of the teacher? Um, so we're going to answer all four of those questions. Um, but before we jump in, I do want to talk a little bit about the new teaks. Those of you who have um, looked into those know that they are significantly different. Um, they were intentionally written so that uh, teachers could can no longer teach in what they called the lit writers and the new teaks literally called them silos, right? So you've got writing here, you've got reading here, grammar's over here, speaking and listening is over here somehow. Um, the new teaks are integrated, so it's it's w far more complex to design your curriculum and your lessons um, because of the new teaks. So there are going to be some challenges adjusting to the new teaks. Beyond that, um, we know that nearly two thirds of, of students graduating high school are not college and career ready. That means they're not ready to go into college. They don't have the skills necessary to to um, you know hack at their freshman year of college. And so so the traditional methods of doing things, you know, basal that your basal anthology textbook of of, of the past years, um, you know, it was, it was you know decent for then. It was good for then, but. We have new challenges and, and um, we have to do things in a little bit different way. And so when we saw the new Teaks, we didn't just take an existing product and try to try to work with it and, and dress it up a little bit and call it something new. We started completely over. So what we're offering is a brand new resource that is specifically written to these new Teaks, not just like the, oh, we're covering all the Teaks, but the, the way that the new Teaks are asking us to um, to teach. And so I'm very excited to be able to, to show you um, our, our new product. So let, let's just jump right in. Okay. The, the centerpiece, here's the package that you'll be uh, looking at with Perfection Learning. The centerpiece is a program called Connections. This is one that we kind of built from the ground up with a new instructional design, a new instructional approach. Um, so Connections is a consumable, we're calling it a work text. It's not a workbook. It's not an anthology. It's sort of a, a little bit of a mix. It's a whole new different thing. So we're calling it a work text. I don't know if that's that's a great name for it or not, but um, it is a consumable, but your adoption money is going to cover all eight years and maybe beyond of these consumable books. So if you're worried that like, hey, we, we don't want to purchase stuff in the out years, you won't have to. And one more reason why we designed it to be a consumable item is because we believe in annotation. Uh, we think annotating a text is a real secret to helping um, all readers, but especially, you know, maybe even struggling readers, English language learners, if they can annotate and put their thoughts on paper, that really helps them to unpack the text and derive meaning. Uh, and that really is why this whole system was created, is to derive meaning and understanding, um, get ideas out of the text. Here's a piece of text, it doesn't matter if it's online, in print, can, do you have the skills requisite to derive meaning from that? That's why we created Connections. So cutting to the chase here, here's really what makes Connections different. It combines three different elements, it integrates three different elements that had never been um, integrated in this way before. And they are close reading, heavy skill development, that's a big one, and then critical thinking and inquiry. Okay, so we want to put close reading in there, multiple purposeful reads for different reasons for to get to go from, you know, the, the what, what's going on in this passage to the next time you're looking maybe for the, the how and then the why, really diving deeper and deeper into the text. Um, and you may think, well, my students don't really want to read things multiple times. If it's a layered passage and you can point them towards something ahead of time and they, they're finding all this meaning on, on second reads, they start to expect meaning and really look for it. And it, it, it Definitely, we've seen it time and time again. It increases motivation and engagement for sure. Uh, the second thing, the skill development. We take, a, like I like to say, we, we take a hard charge right at the skills. So we're not just going to take one skill and integrate it into one passage. We are going to hit multiple skills multiple times in a given uh, lesson. Okay, um, that's really the heart and soul of English language arts is the skills. Can, and can you transfer that skill to an, to another text? So in connections, it's sort of the if you think of it, it's got a lot of scaffolding, but the idea is that we practice these skills and you can apply them in an independent, you know, reading setting. 
be it a novel or an article or whatever. Why is that skill development so important? Um, it was really brought home to me when a, a really rock star um, uh, ELA coordinator just offhandedly mentioned one time, I thought this was genius, and uh, she said, kids don't fail out of their freshman year of college because they didn't read The Great Gatsby or they didn't have a chance to read Anne Frank. Um, those are great pieces of literature and, and we love them. But the reason they fail out is because they don't have the skills, the ability to, to hack it with all the reading that they have to do and drive meaning from it. So having those skills that they can transfer to other texts, that's the, that's the heavy lift of teaching ELA. Um, and the third thing, and as a former debate teacher that's near and dear to my heart, to my heart is the critical thinking and inquiry. Before we ever look at uh, you know the lesson, we start to preview the ideas. We start to talk about the ideas embedded in these texts because reading for reading's sake is, is just fine, but if we can derive meaning and start to think and teach our students how to think and discuss, um, you know, the, the, discuss their ideas. They become college and career ready. I mean, we we find all when we talk to employers, the one thing that that um, when the surveys are done, they say our kids need to have the soft skills, the communication skills, and that's what we're going to give. So we're not just going to be reading, writing. We're going to be speaking and listening and discussing these ideas on on a high level. So those are the three things that Connections does that makes us different. Okay, so here's how. Let's. I want to uh, show you how we achieve that. Okay, so before we open the books and look at the table of contents and the lesson structure, here's what I like to call the heart of the system. Okay, so when I say the heart of the system, this is really the engine that drives connections. If you have a review sample in front of you, uh, find the beginning of any chapter and then turn two pages ahead. Okay, so there's some anticipatory set, but really the heart and soul of the system, the engine the, uh, is, is this. Three reads, they read the same passage three times and do skill development in between each read. Okay, so it's first, you, you should see something that says first read and then it will give the student an objective to dive in to that passage, um, something to look for, right? So look for the, the sensory details. Look for what you think the central idea is. Look for a cause, underline a cause, and circle the effect. Something like that, right? So it gives them something to annotate. So first read, it's typically at the what, what's going on here, and then focus on a certain skill. So if you look after the passage, you'll see it says focus on making inferences. That's the skill development, right? So first read, skill development, second read, for a different purpose, uh, uh, focus on a separate skill. Third read, we're getting at the meaning and the deeper meanings of this passage. And then lastly, uh, a third skill to focus on, okay? So that's the heart and soul system. Last time, first read, skill development. Second read, skill development. Third read, skill development. So we've, we've really demonstrated these skills. And I will say, we're not doing the heavy lifting for the students in the reading or the skill um, practice. We don't just talk about a skill, we ask them to demonstrate that skill. And that's a big difference um, as you're reviewing all these materials, take note of that. Uh, we're not saying, hey, as you're reading through this, check this out, Ooh, there's a little call out over here on the side. Look, here's the central idea. No, we say, you look for the central idea. You, as the student, have to do the heavy lifting of the work. We give you enough scaffolding and enough focus to say, uh, to, to allow even a struggling student to, to do the um, to do the work, but we require the student to do the heavy lifting and demonstrate. Um, and and uh, what's great about this, I heard this term the other day, productive struggle. That's perfect for connections because these are not these are aggressively on level uh, uh, selections. They're beautiful selections that have been chosen, but they they are some of them are, can be challenging. Some of the skills we're asking the student to do can be challenging. We want them to struggle through that and give them enough scaffolding so that they can actually access the the deeper meanings of these passages and and exhibit these skills and show the teacher that they can do them. So there might be a little struggle, but that's part of the system. They have to do that to get to where where they can transfer their learning to another complex passage. If it seems like I'm getting fired up about this. I am. Okay, so let's do a deep dive on one chapter so you can see every part uh, of the chapter. They're all structured the same, so every chapter in all the six, eight connections books are going to be structured like this. I have uh, the sixth grade book, so hopefully maybe you have a sample in front of you or you could pull it up online. Um, but chapter 13, Analyzing Points of View in a Memoir, it starts on page 244. So I'll give you, some, you know, press pause and, and get the, the, the sample in front of you and then we'll keep going. Okay, the very first part of every chapter is previewing concepts. So we want to get the ideas that are going to be discussed in, in, um, in a given passage or the um, 
sort of maybe academic vocabulary or some of the ideas that you, they're going to or skills that they're going to have to do. We just sort of seed these concepts here and bring them up. This one happens to be talking about denotation versus connotation um, and does an exercise saying like, you know, which uh, denotation is the strict definition of the word connotation um, is, is it good or bad, right? You can say, I like the example here, cheap versus inexpensive. Inexpensive is a good thing. Cheap, it really means the exact same thing, but cheap has a a different connotation, right? So they do an exercise with some, um, so with some that it's going to help us out later on in the, the chapter, okay? And then making connections. They're going to be responding to some prompts, and, and the idea here is that we elicit maybe some of their prior experiences, get them to talk about some of the ideas that they're going to be seeing later, um, foster a conversation, but really connect it to their own life or their past experience so that it has meaning. You know, all the learning research says once they have a schema, in their brain, then it has something to attach itself to. So if they have had a prior experience that they can kind of bring up and go, oh yeah, I remember that. And then the passage will have a deeper meaning to them and they can retain more of it. So making connections is a very um, important um, part of the whole process. And then it's, it's, it's what I call the heart of the system, right? First read, skill development. Second read, skill development. Third read, skill development. So um, in this case, the objective, if you look in the second paragraph under the first read uh, logo, it says objective. Uh, as you read, notice how words are used to influence the actions of the people in China. Underline the words that have positive connotations, place a plus sign next to them. Uh, also underline negative words uh, and mark them with a minus sign. Okay, so they are, you know, look, annotating the text as they go through using connotation and denotation. And also note, notice that we have the, just like most uh, books you'll review, we do have that point of use vocab. So if there's some words that are unfamiliar, it's right there for them to, to look at. Okay, so if you turn to page 250, uh, you're gonna see the focus on. So here's the skill development, right? We had the first read for a very specific purpose, now we have the focus on. This time it's using details to determine central idea. There's a writing opportunity on page 251. If you turn over to 252, you'll see the second read. So now we're going to dive back in for a different reason um, and read the text again with a partner this time. Okay, so we're going to mix it up a little bit. Um, write the POV, the point of view, uh, next to the lines from the text that help you infer. So we're pulling a little inference here as well infer the point of view of the following characters. So we have these different characters. They all have a point of view on the event that happened. Um, it's a great passage, by the way. I would encourage you to read this one. It's just naturally engaging. All the passages in these connections, we get such good feedback on just passage selection. Um, so anyway, that's an aside. So they're gonna write POV and what they think the point of view of the character is in the annotation space on the side of the passage. Okay, so that's what they go back in and they're looking for something different. It makes the passage fresh and new again and gives them a reason to reread. So it doesn't get boring. Um, okay, so after we get done doing that, focus on analyzing various points of view in a narrative. Okay, so now they have to go back in and demonstrate the skill. Here's the character, here's their point of view on the event that happened. And so they have to use textual evidence to cite that. Okay, look down at the bottom of page 253. And we're just breezing through this. This is not uh, as, I'm not gonna walk you through lesson you can read on your own time, but I did wanna point out some of these features. Uh, there's a speaking and listening activity. In a group with two, two or three people, write three to five questions you would like to ask a G. Lee about the events described in the excerpt. Okay, so pretend we're gonna interview her and write down some questions that you wanna know. Okay, so now on page 254, the third read, integrating visuals to a text. So now we're gonna take a propaganda poster and sort of compare and contrast it, like what's going on in the passage, what's going on in this propaganda poster, and we're gonna analyze, you know, kind of put those two together and you can really see some really neat connections between the text, the story that, that happened in the, in the passage, and this propaganda poster, it's really neat. Um, and then lastly, um, this skill development, we're gonna ask the students to um, analyze this visual image, you know, if you notice the different prompts going down, who uh, is in the image, what is happening, where, what, and if you turn over lastly to 256, it's the how and the why, right? So we're diving deeper in from, from just the surface level all the way to the, the why, the meaning of the passage. So even in the skill development, we're, we're still drilling down further and further and further and hoping and getting more and more out of the passage. So 
uh, three reads might sound like a lot. It's actually more the more interesting the further you get uh, the, into these close reads. Okay, so at the bottom of page 256, you see another speaking and listening opportunity, another writing prompt, right? So these aren't maybe huge essays, but we do want our students writing frequently, even if you're not grading every, every bit of it. I heard a really awesome uh, teacher in Dallas ISD tell me, if you're grading everything that your students are writing, they're probably not writing enough, right? You want them just to do quick writes and sort of get their thoughts on paper, even if it's not a formalized essay writing process. Um, and then the next section here is language. So per the new teaks, reading, writing, speaking, listening, um, grammar is all sort of integrated. And this is how we integrate grammar into the program. So after each, um, you know, the, the close reads and the skill development, we're going to look at an aspect of language or grammar. Um, this time it's capitalization, capitalization of proper names. So you see there's some examples from the text. We ask the students to uh, demonstrate that language skill. And then if you flip over to, to page 258, this is a really cool aspect for maybe like a GT class, a class where you've got some strugglers, you're going to have to go back and do some of the remediation, which is going to be in the teacher guide. Um, what are your high flyers doing, right? They could go further. They could be um, doing more, creating things. We include always include two project-based assessment items um, in case you want your students to go further. Maybe the whole class gets into it and they really want to, you want to kind of hang out there and capitalize on their engagement. There's two project-based assessments, um, or as I said, you can do some remediation and send some of your um, top students uh, to do some of these project-based assessments. This particular time, there's uh, creating a digital poster um, of protest on some modern day thing that, you know, maybe an injustice or something like that. So they're going to be creating high up on blooms. Um, or the second one is, and it gives them all the steps to doing it. And the second one is a round table discussion. So they can get together and there's these rules to having a round table discussion. Okay. And the second to last section here is on your own integrating ideas on page 261. So this is really a, a traditionally like the extensions. So it just has some suggestions of if you want to go further on your own and do some um, independent reading, maybe these are some suggestions for that. And so the last part of every chapter is connect to testing. So let's pretend that that passage from uh, Red Scarf Girl was on the star test. What might those questions afterward look like? What sort of things would the test be asking the students to do with that text? Okay, and I think this is really a great thing because it teaches students, it gives them that muscle memory uh, or mind muscle memory of reading things multiple times. How many of your students might read through the passage once and then just blast through the questions? Even if they're struggling on them, do they go back in and really struggle with the text and, and read it multiple times? If they've been doing it all year, th they really might. It gives them that skill to be able to say, no, it's, it's okay to reread the entire passage. It's okay to dive back into it. So I do feel like, while, like I said, it's not about the test, it does give them a lot of good test taking best practice skills that can improve their performance on test. And that's really the system. You, you have the anticipatory set section, the heart of the system, the close reads with the skill development integrated, and also the, re, you know, the, the speaking and listening and writing prompts in there. And then afterwards, the language, the grammar exercises, and um, some extension activities, and finally, the connected testing. And that's the structure of a chapter in connections. Okay, so let's take a look at the big picture now. Okay, what is the overall structure of connections? Uh, if you take a look at any of the tables of contents, you will see that there are four units, typically made up of five chapters. Sometimes it's a little bit different, but every unit has an essential question. If you look at the first one in sixth grade, it's how are friendships built and broken? We really tried to pick essential questions that apply to their life or are very interesting. Um, and then we're going to read different types of passages. So uh, the, the, from sixth grade, it's a, a fiction piece from Bud Not Buddy, uh, a memoir, an article, a personal essay, a radio play. So it's structured around the uh, pretty much thematic units, right? This is sort of a thematic unit of study, and we're doing different genres within that. But, but it all speaks back to the essential question, how are friendships built and broken? And finally, at the end of each unit, um, we're going to have an essay writing opportunity and a practice performance task. Um, with the digital materials that you're going to receive free, the essential guide, there's additional writing materials. So you actually have some flexib flexibility and some options as to which ones you actually have your students execute. So that brings up the question, how do you plan your curriculum with connections, right? 
the answer is it's a, it's a very flexible program. So you literally could just march right through the book, page one to page 350, whatever it is, and have a great year. Maybe pull in a novel in between some of the units, um, some choice reading. Uh, that's a great way to do it. Or we have a lesson planning tool so you could see what it looks like if you have a unit of your own that you created that you love and you wanna just drop unit three and connect and all together and pull in your own thing. We have a lesson planning tool so you can see which teaks you would be dropping and that way you can plan accordingly and make sure that you pull in some of the um, some of the lessons from Essential Guide or something you know that, that you like using already. Um, we know that you know most teachers probably aren't going to march straight through the book. Teachers are creative people by nature, so you're going to have a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and that's fine. Um, you can literally take it by skill and just say, I want to really hit the uh, these skills all throughout, and my kids don't need work on that. So so let, you know you're you're going to lose some of the thematic uh, um, value and some of the critical thinking, but that is a valid way to use it. So. The, the answer to how do you use this in a uh, in your curriculum and your scope and sequence is basically however you want to. We just have to make sure that we're covering the teaks. Okay, so let's take a look at the teacher wraparound edition. Um, I have the sixth grade. Again, we're going to look at the same lesson, uh, uh, chapter 13 from the sixth grade, page 244. It's going to be page for page, the same as the student book. So every part and the student book is going to have a corollary on the outside of the teacher wraparound edition. So we see help with our, uh, you know, the introduction, the pre we're previewing the academic vocabulary. But the bottom, this is where you're going to see the ELL support and the remediation. Okay, because we want to make sure that um, all of our students are being served very well. So notice, I mean, you know, we've got graphic organizers and we've got things built right into the student book that sort of scaffold and give help to to our strugglers or our language learners. But we have even more support at the bottom here in this um, the blue section at the bottom in the teacher wraparound okay and also just a note so the uh, you know we did hear back from some some teachers and rightfully so that not all English language learners um, are you know that come from a Spanish speaking background so where it says ELL we're gonna in the next printing we're actually removing the exclamation points because you know I, I taught a lot of students from the Middle East from India from all over so we want to make sure that English language learners applies to all of our newcomers okay and speaking of ELL support, this isn't the only thing that we're giving you for ELL support. We've actually created a separate document that is almost like a primer on teaching ELL. So we took the best of the research, the best um, reproducibles, the best of everything, and created a resource that is very practical. It's very powerful. Um, if you have a, a teacher that's not uh, used to teaching ELL students, it, it will really give them a leg up on integrating not just in, in a specific lesson, but just general tools that they can uh, apply in, in, in any lesson, not just connections. So that is another part that comes free with the program. Okay, so if you look at page 245, I did want to just point out a couple of these. I'm not going to read all the teacher materials, but if you look at the Making Connections, I thought this one was particularly good. In the Making Connections, um, in the student book, it says, you know, think about a political ad you've seen on television or watch a political ad with your class and describe it, and we do some questions with that. The, in, the print, in the teacher wraparound edition, it says, consider having students analyze print ads rather than video ads. Uh, print ads can be more, more easily studied, shared, and displayed in your classroom. So let's say the, the internet goes down one day, we, we got you covered, you know, have a, have a print ad or two uh, as backup. That might be even better. Um, and also a technology suggestion. There's a 10-minute po podcast. I'm a big podcaster, so uh, I just like that there was a, um, your students are used to digesting things, you know, or ingesting things rather through their ears. So uh, a 10 minute podcast about, um, you know, some, some common propaganda techniques could be an interesting thing for your students. Okay, so turning over to page 246, again, I'm not going to read all these teacher callouts. You can do that uh, on your own if you want to, but I did want to point out just kind of something that I thought might be a good idea. Consider under the first read, it says consider asking students to read the passage uh, twice during the first read. So your first read turns into, you know, first and second. The first time they should read simply and literally to understand what happens, just that surface level meaning. The second time they should mark positive and negative words with plus or minus signs. So if you have a class that you, you know it's they're going to have trouble um, reading and, and kind of processing at the same time, have them read through it once and just sort of get an idea of what's going on. And then they can start making those judgments uh, with the, the connotation, positive and, and negative uh, connotations. So I thought that was just a good one. So we have some vocabulary help. 
there on the left. On the right, page 247, um, I like these text-based discussion questions, right? So you help, can help foster uh, classroom discussion, that active learning. You know, why did the crowd destroy the wooden sign? What is the significance, uh, or what, why is that significant that the board refused to break? In line 58. So these are, if you read through the passage, you'll understand the importance of that. It's, again, it's a very cool question. And then there's some extra stuff that you can throw in, slogans in history. And again, this is very up to date. If you look down at the bottom, uh, you know, political slogans, yes, we can, stronger together, make America great again. These, this is a very new program. And so we want to make sure that the things that they're hearing out there, even in politics, that we are connecting the learning to something in their life. Uh, and about the author. It's important to understand where the author comes from, um, his or her background. That actually informs the reading of these passages. So that's something you could bring in um, maybe in between reads and discuss with your class to get their background, their cultural perspectives and that sort of thing. Okay, if you look on page 250, you'll see remediation at the bottom. All right, we're going to ask, uh, you know, encourage struggling students to create a timeline that shows the events of this memoir. Okay, so that's just an extra thing for someone to do if a student is, is having a little bit of trouble. Again, ELL support on the right-hand side. This is going to be sentence frames. That's a big part of ELL, uh, ELL teaching. And so it continues on like that with the teacher help and the sides and the remediation and the ELL support at the bottom. And lastly, I did want to point out that there are unit tests for each of the four units, and there's an EOC test uh, that's meant to mirror the STAR test. Now, unfortunately, we don't know. TEA has not told us what the... Uh, the new STAR test is going to look like. We'll just have to wait and see. So starting in year two, we will have a better idea when we see those release tests, and we'll have a modified version of this to make sure that our practice EOC test is tightly aligned to what we know the test should look like. And then there are um, standards correlations and a pacing guide. There are It is a double, um, a dual kind of way standards correlation. So you can say, hey, this chapter, what are the teaks that we're hitting in this chapter? Or you can say, Ooh, here's, I need to focus on this standard. What are my lesson opportunities? And one quick note here I wanted to add for teachers teaching at a smaller school. Um, I grew up in a small school. I love the learning that goes on in small schools and the community uh, that happens in, in those smaller towns and smaller schools. Um, I talk to a lot of teachers that teach multiple preps and it can be really a challenge. Um, with connections, I did want to point out that if you just stay a few pages ahead of the kids, you win. It is a solid curriculum through and through. So if you just kind of read it a, a few pages ahead, read through the teacher guide, it does not take that long to prepare for a connections lesson. It's, and, and once you understand the system and the lesson design, it will become even easier. So even after just a few chapters, you'll see how it works and your prep time will go down you know, lesson and lesson as you go. Um, so I do think it could be a massive help to smaller district teachers um, because it's just ready to go out of the box. Now you can adapt it and do anything else you want to with it, but if you are struggling for prep time, I think it could be a great solution. So let's talk technology. Uh, we obviously have the print version of Connections, but we also have a digital version of Connections as well. They are the same price, but for a few dollars more, you can get the print and digital bundle, which is a great deal if you want them to have maybe, uh, you know, the print at school and then at home have the online to do their homework with. So it's page for page the same in the print and the digital. Um, we really believe so strongly in the lesson design, the instructional approach of Connections that we wanted the digital to mirror the digital experience, to mirror the print experience as much as possible. So if they have that book and they're annotating and they're working through it right in front of them, that's great. We wanted them to be able to do as closely as possible the same thing in the digital space. So if you look at the digital version of the student book, you will see that where there's a question or a graphic organizer somewhere for them to respond, there's a text box. So the student simply clicks in the text box, types in their answers, clicks out of the text box, and they're done. It's very simple, very user-friendly, easy to use. So as I said earlier, we really believe in the power of annotation. So just like the kids in the print book can mark it up and highlight, we wanted them to be able to do that in the digital space as well. So uh, there are multiple colors of pen tools, which work great on iPhones and iPads. Um, there are multiple colors of highlighting. There are sticky notes so that um, if a student can't be there with their group, maybe they're homesick, they can still communicate by uh, putting a, a sticky virtual sticky note down 
making their note and then sharing that with selected people. They can share it with the whole class if they want to, or just their group or just the teacher. So that's a way of, of kind of getting that interaction. Um, and so we can annotate, we can answer, we can do all the, pretty much all the things that you can do in the print book, you can do in the digital version as well. Only there's no mechanical hiccups and it's very easy to use, very stream, streamlined and user friendly. Uh, we wanted students to be able to focus on the lesson itself, on the work at hand, and not on the uh, technical mechanics of using technology. If you get any questions from your tech people about is our system, our online system, uh, compliant with common cartridge or clever, does it do this rostering thing? Is it? Yeah. The answer is yes. I, I don't understand all the ins and outs. I'm not that much of a tech person, but our tech team has worked very, very hard to make sure that whatever is out there, we have, uh, we are compliant with those standards, and we've made sure that our rostering system plays nicely with your rostering system and that sort of thing. So, if for some reason uh, there's an, an something new comes up during, during the adoption, Option, our tech team is, is uh, ready and waiting to adapt to that. So we want to make it as easy as possible for your tech people to implement our digital materials. And lastly, there are three ways to access our um, Engage system. That's what we call it, Perfection Learning Engage. Uh, our Engage system is an app in the App Store for Apple products, iOS devices. Uh, it is a Google Play app as well, or you can just log in with a web browser. So Chromebooks, PC, Mac, um, iPads, uh, iPhones, Google phone. It's basically, if you can get on the internet, our system will work with your devices. So no matter what device you have in, on, on your campuses, we will work with that device. So if you adopt connections for eight years, we're going to throw in a couple of resources that are very, very cool and effective, um, just, just for free, complimentary resources, um, digital access to two of our um, most popular and most effective resources. One of those is the Essential Guide to Writing and Language. So this handbook is a comprehensive guide for grammar, usage, mechanics, composition, critical thinking, and literature. There's a lot in here. So if you need a reference guide, a reference handbook for all the language arts rules and just best practices in reading and composition, it's all in here. Right, so if a kid has uh, trouble with punctuation, a certain aspect of maybe adverbs or, or um, yeah, you, you know, subject verb agreement. This is this contains the rules. Okay, so it's a reference book that you can pull out when needed. It's not a curriculum. It's a it's a resource to draw upon when needed. So we believe very strongly in connections and the lesson design and the instructional approach of connections. But we recognize the need to sometimes you want to pull in other resources that maybe go goes a little bit deeper on the grammar side or the composition side. So we are including if you adopt connections, we can go with perfection learning for this adoption. We will throw in for free uh, digital access to two things, the essential guide to writing and language and the skill books that accompany that handbook. OK, so let's take a look at those really quickly. The essential guide to writing and language is essentially a handbook. It's a, a comprehensive guide for grammar, usage, mechanics, composition, critical thinking and literature. So really, it's a reference text. It has uh, straightforward, succinct, really easy to use uh, lessons in here. So if a student is struggling with a certain aspect of language arts, maybe punctuation or subject verb agreement, they can easily find and read a quick lesson that gets them up to speed. So as an example of how you would pull in some of these lessons from the um, essential guide, uh, we earlier we looked at chapter 13 in the student book of the sixth grade connections um, and it was essentially about propaganda right it was the, the red scarf girl there's actually a, a chapter on propaganda and the essential guide that goes a little bit deeper about the argumentation and the different kinds of arguments that you can find in a propaganda piece so if the students get interested in it if you don't think they're quite grasping a, a concept be it you know a, a composition or a grammatical concept you can dive into the essential guide and if you want to see your students practice those concepts, we are including the skill books. Each level, six, seven, eight, has a, a separate skill book with one-off lessons that you can put in front of your students and have them go through to demonstrate mastery of subject verb agreement or adverbs or punctuation, you know, quotation marks. Um, there's so many lessons. I mean, it's a, it's a wealth of, of uh, it's essentially worksheets, right? We're not a big fan of the worksheet model, but sometimes you just need something quick and practical. There's a wealth, there's a treasure trove of um, the, uh, skill sheets in this skill book that you can pull out as needed. And just as an aside here, I know one of the biggest beatdowns about being a teacher is pre preparing for a sub. 
So just having some a, a resource to draw upon that's quick, it's easy, um, it, it's effective, and these these really do help the kids um, with some of these more difficult aspects of of grammar, usage, mechanics, composition. Um, it's just really handy, and I feel like it's a nice practical tool that we're equipping you with. Complimentary. So one last note about the essential guide. This was written uh, specifically for Texas, all right, and and specifically for the new Teaks. Um, so that it really even the language matches up with the language that you're going to see in the new Teaks. So again, uh, the the essential guide and the essential guide skill books come free with an adoption of connections. So that's really the package that, are, that you're getting. The students spend most of the time in connections, um, and then can you can pull in things from the essential guide and the skill books as you need. So another resource that we like to pair with connections and the essential guide and the skill books would be novels. Uh, we carry over 40,000 titles and are constantly adding titles. And if there's something specific that you need, we can research that and get that for you. So long it's over maybe, you know, 15, 20 copies. Um, so we would love to be your novel provider and use these IMA funds, the adoption funds, um, to either purchase whole class novels, you know, maybe a set of 30 or 35 so that we're all reading uh, Bud Not Buddy or To Kill a Mockingbird, something like that. Um, if you want to do lit circles five or six copies of, of a lot of books we can do that um, or better yet classroom libraries we very much believe in voice and choice and independent reading um, I mean I've I read through the entire Lord of the Rings series and the Silmarillion even though most people find that very dry and boring um, I loved it I was very motivated to keep going because I chose that now my wife she's read through every Nicholas Sparks book I would not do that. Um, so depending on your interest, if you can have a wide array of books in your classroom, um, that really can spark a love of reading. So, so it's that right book for that you know right student at the right level. Um, that's what we would love to provide you. So we actually have pre-made sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade classroom libraries. Um, we have multicultural libraries. We have thematic libraries. We have historical libraries. So we have all these pre uh, libraries pre-made, but you're not limited to to just that. Um, like I said, we have over 40,000 titles, so if you have a specific interest or a specific budget, we actually have a tool that you can use to create your own classroom library. So build your own customized, um, perfectly tailored classroom libraries. You know the types of kids you have, you know the budget that you have, um, so while if you, if you want to dive in and really select titles, it's a very easy way to do that um, and get exactly what you need. So we'd love to be your novel pr provider, be it whole class, lit circle, uh, or classroom library. One last thing I'd like to mention is uh, we carry a proprietary hardback binding called Covercraft. We can Covercraft any novel out there. Um, the advantage is there's a lifetime warranty. Okay, so um, they're more expensive, obviously, but with these IMA funds available this year, these adoption funds, it really might be a good time to, to get hardback lifetime warranty versions of the, uh, the books that you know are gonna be in your curriculum for the foreseeable future. So if you know that you know, we are gonna do To Kill a Mockingbird at eighth grade you know, for the next uh, 10 years, why, don't, why not go ahead and get a class set of those that are gonna last uh, in perpetuity? So before we wrap up, I did just want to mention that uh, while Connections and Essential Guide is our adoption offering, that's not the only thing that um, you can purchase with your IMA funds. A few years back, TEA made a rule that um, so long as you're proving that you're covering the TEKS, you can spend your instructional material allotment fund on whatever you want. So this is an opportunity that hasn't existed before. Um, this adoption, you could, if there's a specific instructional approach in your district, maybe it's um, we're really going to go all in on balanced literacy at the uh, middle school level. Maybe it's units of study, uh, the inquiry model. There's a number of these approaches that uh, that that a lot. I talk to districts and they're doing some really innovative, cool things. We actually have other materials in our catalog that can support those very well. So. Um, if you have something like that, please feel free to reach out and let's have a conversation about what you would like to see and we can put together a package that matches those needs that's under budget and that can really allow you to not just cover the teaks, but, but do it in the way that your district initiative um, uh, mandates and, and, or, or, the, or the dream curriculum that you want, right? You, you literally could just kind of a la carte build your dream curriculum. It's more work on your side, you know, connections, uh, it just sort of covers all the standards. But I mean, I, I think it would be very fun to be able to design my own curriculum with all the resources um, that, that Perfection Learning provides. Um, there's a lot of great stuff out there. I'll just mention a couple. 
Writing Companion is a very inexpensive but very powerful writing uh, program. So it takes each mode of writing, maybe argumentative writing, informative writing, uh, literary analysis, and takes the, the students through many lessons to build an essay. So it takes them all the way through the writing process once with heavy scaffolding. It takes them through the writing process twice with about half as much scaffolding. And then it gives them a third prompt that they can go through the writing process a third time with no scaffolding. So it's sort of that gradual release model, right? Uh, we're gonna have a lot of scaffolding, just a little bit, and then you're on your own. Um, so it really is a very powerful tool. Um, it's sort of um, you know a workshop model of many lessons. That's what it's designed to do. Vocabulate, vocabulary in the context of literature. Okay, so we're gonna take a piece of literature, a short piece, uh, and pull out 10 words, and then do six exercises looking at those words from different perspectives. There are 30 selections per level, 10 words, so it's you're gonna wind up doing a total of 300 words per grade level, um, and really working on these words from different perspectives and showing them in context, the way that students actually encountered them in real life. So it, it not only works on these words, but teaches students how to use context clues to um, identify words that they might not be familiar with in a, in a new passage. The reason I like vocabulary so much is that it's easily integrated into any curriculum. So no matter what you're doing in the classroom, you can take these mini lessons and pop them in uh, here or there and they just fit nicely because they are so short and, and, and flexible. So we're building the student's vocabulary um, one mini lesson at a time. And the last resource I want to mention is Literature and Thought. This has been one of our best-selling resources for the last several years. Literature and Thought is a series of 25 different titles, uh, each dealing with a different era in history, a literary genre, a literary theme, and it takes short selections of complex text and groups them thematically around an essential question. So it's called Literature and Thought because we're taking these short selections of, of authentic literature and we're using them to spur discussion, uh, critical thinking. So if you're interested in doing um, thematic units or maybe the inquiry model, this really supports both of those because of uh, the thematic nature of it, but also that it, it is designed to spur uh, conversation, critical thinking, um, you know, that it really works well with that inquiry model, I feel like. Um, and could be a nice kind of curricular hub of the wheel, if you will. And of course, the classroom libraries, the novels, we can again support that. If you're looking to design your own curriculum, kind of do an a la carte model um, from several different resources, that is completely an option, this adoption cycle. Um, and we can support you with, with many different resources, not just the ones I've mentioned, um, and the novels as well. So if you're interested in doing something like that, please reach out to us, let us know what you're wanting to do, and we can um, tailor a resource specific to you and your district. So in closing, you know, I, I kind of really hate to use the slogan, new, better, different, um, but that's really kind of what Connections is. It's new. It's bringing a fresh instructional approach to the table. Uh, it's better. If your students go through the three reads and, and learn how to unpack the layers of meaning, the deeper meaning of a text, um, and they work on the skill development in between so, so they can apply those skills to other unfamiliar texts, maybe challenging complex texts. If they're discussing their ideas, the critical thinking and discussion, and developing those soft skills of, of communicating ideas, I mean... I, we talk a lot about college and career ready, career, career readiness, but the ability to unpack a text, have the skills to, to do that and communicate about ideas. What is that if not college and career ready? Is that not preparing your students for life? Um, and that's why I get very passionate about connections. So really, I think the key advantages to connections are this. It helps develop students to be active learners and critical thinkers through inquiry and discussion. It develops their reading skills so that they can transfer those skills to any text. Also, it helps students to have greater reading stamina through close reading. It helps teach students the art of annotation, which they'll need in college. And lastly, Connections provides heavy ELL support so that no matter where in the world that a student comes from, the door to success is open for them. And for you as the teacher, I feel like Connections brings a few key advantages to the table as well. Firstly, Connections is going to make your preparation time really count. It's gonna help you teach all of the new integrated teaks with ease. So reading, writing, speaking, listening, thinking, all these things are, things are seamlessly blended together in connections. So newer teachers can get up to speed. More experienced teachers can take this framework and extend it and apply it to other texts and get really creative. Secondly, connections is gonna make your instructional time really count. Your students are gonna be having rich, engaging discussions about real world topics. Uh, they're gonna be getting to the heart of a reading skill faster. They're gonna be diving deeper into uh, passages and, and extracting the real meaning. 
And lastly, Connections gives all students the ability to deeply evaluate and analyze texts. This will lead to improved test scores, it will turn them on to literacy, and it will make, help make them college and career ready and hopefully open the door to a wonderful, fulfilling life for these students. That's what motivates us at Perfection Learning. That's what makes us passionate, is opening the door to a great life for these kids. So thank you so much for watching this review video. If we can provide more information for you, answer any questions, provide samples, please don't hesitate to call or email. Um, we'd love to talk to you about what's going on in your district, um, the, any needs that you have, any challenges you have, and, and how we can help. You've got some pretty big consequential decisions coming up, and we would like to ask you to go with Perfection Learning for this adoption. We want to partner with you for the next eight to 10 years to genuinely improve literacy in your district. So again, thanks for watching, and we hope to hear from you soon.